Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Lazada Insider. Sustainability is increasingly becoming a necessity for business due to changing perspective around the world. It is becoming even more critical for businesses to address the gap between knowing and doing by embracing sustainable business practices, showing environment, social, and governance impact, and communicating transparently about what you do, give you competitive edge against your competitors. Today, we have Christine joining us from London to explore the topic on how can businesses embed sustainability into business growth. Christine leads BSL business transformation team, helping companies to manage sustainability throughout their business and across their supply chains, and to develop resilient business strategy that leverage insights from BSL Sustainable Future Lab. She works with companies across sectors around the world to structure a sustainability management approach that mitigates risk and capture emerging opportunities, creating strategy advantage for their business while contributing to a more sustainable world. Hi, Christine. Welcome to Lazada Insider. Hello, Chen. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm delighted to be with you and with everybody. So a warm hello from the UK. Cool. Of course, just now I have give a brief introduction about you. But how about you telling us a bit more about yourself and probably what have you been busy with recently? So um, I work for BSR which is a sustainability advisory. We've been working with companies to create a just and sustainable world for over 30 years. In fact, this year we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. And um, among our members, including Lasada, which we're very happy to welcome into the family, we work with companies from corporations, multinational corporations from around the world to really focus on their sustainability strategies and see how they can create long-term value and growth. So we focus in areas such as sustainability management and business transformation, which is the area that I lead, also climate change, human rights, equity, inclusion and justice, uh, as well as supply chain. And we're located in eight offices around the world, including in Singapore. Um, I joined BSR a year ago, um, but I previously come with over 20 years in the private sector, in the tech sector, I worked in uh, for Nokia, I worked for Alcatel Lucent, I worked for Alcatel, I was head of brand strategy, head of brand and corporate sustainability, and started off my career head of public affairs focused on Europe, the UN, as well as the World Economic Forum. So it's a real pleasure for me um, to be working with companies such as Lazada, as well as all of your users on your platform around the world to see how do we create that just and sustainable world at a time when we're living in urgency for a decisive decade that drives change. Thanks for the introductions. Let's go straight to the topic. So how has the pandemic affected the importance of sustainability in business strategy? I mean, so many things have changed in the pandemic. It's affected people's lives, it's affected communities, it's affected governance, and it's affected also the way that business looks at performance today and assesses value and success. And there have been many shifts and drivers as a result of the pandemic. Um, If I think of some that are closer to you at home, we've seen a massive boom in e-commerce around the world, but particularly in Southeast Asia. Um, We noted that 70 million people in the region are now digital consumers. That's approximately the population of the United Kingdom where I live. And they are deciding with their wallets. They want to know which brands they associate with. They want transparency in their supply chain. They are demanding consumers and buyers. And they're aware. So we've got that shift in how business is selling, moving on to e-retail, which is certainly extremely important for Lazada today and all of your users. The youth and millennial generation also care about sustainability. So they are huge drivers of that change. They are vocal, they are savvy, and they're also raising their voice. If we look at the recent COP26 in Glasgow last year, youth were one of the most visible participants and the ones who voiced the greatest amount of urgency for change to governments as well as to business 
and to civil society organizations. We're seeing an urgency in climate change as well. I mean, the pandemic put a focus on it, but if we think of this week's UN IPCC third report, which is basically saying we need action, we need to focus on that 1.5 uh, percent, uh, sorry, 1.5 degree temperature change, and we need governments and businesses to be serious about their net zero target and to make it happen now. We have a rise in regulation. So many regulators around the world, if companies were considering what focus ESG could have in their business, they're now being mandated disclosure. In Europe, we have it across the environmental and the social dimensions of sustainability, including very important human rights due diligence, which is also changing the role of leadership with governance and boards roles being redefined with an accountability to what is going on with ESG. We have the United States with the SEC that a few weeks ago came with um, disclosure regarding climate change. But we're also seeing that in the Asian region. Um, for example, the SEA Green Investment Guidelines, disclosure for listed companies, as well as risk management guidelines. So there's a rise in regulation and an exposure and transparency. Investors are putting pressure. They're putting pressure on companies to act. They're putting pressure on their leadership. They're putting pressure on boards. And we also have activist shareholders that are equally redefining the role of leadership at that C-suite level and at that board level. So there is a, an acute awareness at the decision table of the change in the responsibility from oversight to active leadership. And finally, employees. Employees who are citizens, who are consumers, they want to work for organizations that not only put their purpose at the heart of what they do, but also that take care of their well-being. These are many, many, many drivers that I think have changed the landscape in which companies are competing, but most importantly, how companies are defining success and focused on long-term value, not just reactive short-term gains in an age of continuing disruption. We know that resources is always limited. So how can sustainability become a source of business growth instead of competing resources with sales-focused initiative? There are many things. Um, so let me start off. There are two ways of looking at it. Um, the first thing is that companies need to set up a solid sustainability framework and foundation. So that means they actually have to look at their business and decide how is sustainability going to influence their overall strategy and purpose? What is their purpose? How do they design a strategy that looks at societal changes and expectations, the expectations of their consumers, their buyers, the expectations of their suppliers, of investors, of regulators, and all those forces? They've done their peer analysis, and they understand where they are against their peers and what is their value-add role in this landscape. They ensure accountability and disclosure. They mobilize the right resources, and they measure and communicate results and performance. So that's part of setting up your sustainability strategy, making sure you do your materiality, understanding your stakeholder expectations, putting your purpose, your targets, your KPIs on how you're going to achieve success, and putting the right governance in place. Governance top down, bottom up, inside out, and outside in. And we can talk about that a bit later. There's also the question of innovation. There are many new companies out there that are just reinventing their business models. They're reinventing them because we're in the age of disruption. So they're seeing all sorts of changes and they've decided to anticipate those changes and rethink how ESG drives their business performance. And also, instead of reacts to societal changes, whether it's extreme weather patterns, um, whether it's societal movements such as Me Too, whether it's embedding equity, inclusion, justice, uh, to name a few, or even political fragmentation. What they're doing is they're rethinking how these respond and drive change. And let me give you a few examples. Uh, we have a, an activity called Futures, um, and every quarter we publish Fast Forward, which is a few emerging insights of things, near-term shifts that we want companies to be aware of. And some of the innovative changes we have seen include digital passports for clothing 
that contain data about individual products. So you have greater transparency across the supply chain and that changes the way that consumers look at clothing, they buy clothing, but also how that industry works with computer, uh, consumers rather to change mind shifts on consumption. We're seeing improved repairability for electronics via our right to repair movement, which has created entire new value chains. I think in Europe, for example, Fairphone, which is an entirely repairable mobile phone that is accessible to people around the world. We're seeing micro factories being powered by 5G and 3D technologies, enabling easy location around the world, which means that you no longer have to have costly um, factories located in big centers around the world, but you can up and create them and serve your supply chain at a time when we're seeing huge shifts in population, perhaps even climate migration, so it brings accessibility, and particularly in emerging economies around the world. So those are some innovations we're seeing. But then we're also seeing companies that are rethinking radically their own transformation for long-term value. And you know, just to name a few over here, we have Unilever that has completely redressed the way that we look at living wage to promote social justice and equity and inclusion. We have Volkswagen, which 10 years ago suffered a huge challenge regarding its emissions accounting. And now today's the world's second largest electric vehicle manufacturer. We've got some companies um, such as Orsted in the Nordics, which has gone from um, um, dirty energy to renewable energy and being one of the world's leaders in sustainability. And then we've got PepsiCo, we've got IKEA, many of these who have turned around and set a sustainability strategy and transformed their business around that strategy. You're going to send me though, Chen, okay, Christine, these are huge corporations um, who have massive amount of resources and therefore can take that, that step change, that mind shift and not incur as much risk as perhaps more nimble, smaller, medium enterprises. But let me give you a few examples um, that we've discovered in the Southeast Asia region of um, companies that are looking at business growth and they're putting sustainability at the heart. Um, one of them is a social e-commerce platform called Tree Dots that connects suppliers with businesses and consumers by selling excess or imperfect food supply at lower prices without compromising quality. That's an innovative business that is digital, that has looked at the transformation and put sustainability at the heart of what it does by solving a greater societal challenge. I think the one thing I wanna say is there's not one size fits all. You really have to think carefully about what is your purpose? What is your strategy? Do your peer analysis, understand your value, do materiality assessment to understand your focus areas, your impacts inwards and your impacts outwards. Allocate the resources and track your performance and communicate transparently. And finally, ensure that you have the right governance in place to drive and inspire change. Top down, bottom up, inside out and outside in. Cool. And that leads to my next question. So you have mentioned about top-down, bottom-up exercise. So which is a better way of integrating sustainability into the business? I think it's a combination of all of them. Um, and let me just take a step back for a moment. We are in the era of what we call purposeful leadership. So there is a need for a mind shift and a behavioral change on the way that we create value for businesses and the role that businesses have within their own boundaries for their employees, for their production, on how they're enabling positive relationships and driving systemic change across their value chain. Their value chain could be their supply chain, for example, tier one, two, three, but also can be in the ecosystem of partners that they work with, as well as influencing and promoting policy frameworks. We're not asking companies to play politics, but we are asking them to shape and promote positive policy frameworks that are favorable to climate change action, societal justice, inclusion, 
and equity. Now, within that, you're going to say to me, so if you want a business to act within its own boundaries, you want them to enable positive relationships across your supply chain and promote policy frameworks, how does this happen? First of all, it has to happen at the top. There's got to be purposeful leadership at the top, and there are huge expectations today on the role of the C-suite in driving change, as well as the board and active governance for long-term change with a keen awareness of ESG drivers. But employees we know also want to play an active role in a purposeful company and to inspire change. They want to work for a company that really cares and also cares about their well-being and the well-being of the communities where they are located. So we need to have leadership setting the tone and the direction and employees enabled and participating in this uh, change. It could be through training. It could be actually leading networks of employees across the various areas of sustainability across every single function. So that's the bottom up change. But we also have to drive change inside out and outside in. A company cannot work in a vacuum. It needs to understand what are the expectations of its stakeholders across its value chain and the communities where it's located? We recommend a materiality assessment aligned with the latest regulatory frameworks, for example, in Europe, a double materiality that understands your impacts inwards and your impacts outwards. So you have to work with your customers, you have to work with your suppliers, you have to work with investors, you have to work with regulators to anticipate their expectations and drive that change across the value chain and i've last thing i've mentioned also is you have to understand government expectations and advocate and shape change to make sure we are driving change for the overall benefit of the community so that's that outside in and that inside out uh, for the company they just started embarked on the sustainability journey so what are some of the common challenges they are facing and what would be your advice to them uh, I would say there are common challenges for any company, whether you're an early starter or whether you're a mature company, the framework for sustainability and the framework for business today is not only in the age of disruption, we're having all sorts of societal changes happening to us all the time, um, but also the requirements are changing as well. So, um, I think the first thing is you have to think of sustainability as a business performance driver. It's not just compliance. You can't just tick the box. You have to see it as part of your business strategy and how you're going to drive long-term value. And that leads me to the second point, which is many companies, when they embark on their sustainability journey, they're in reactive mode. You've got to Start creating the framework to understand your focus areas, to communicate those focus areas, establish clear, clear targets, align with your business, establish the right government governance structures so that you're moving from reactive to proactive and making sure that you've got your eyes on the long term horizon. And we very, very much recommend that companies do future scenarios scenario planning. So in order to build resilience, what you need to do is you need to anticipate what are the disruptions and the changes that are gonna happen due to societal dimensions, from extreme weather patterns to unfortunately wars around the world, to food security challenges, um, to societal movements of inclusion, equity. So make sure you anticipate these changes through scenario planning, allocate resources against various scenarios because there will not be one linear trajectory. You're gonna see companies making many changes. So to be in that proactive mode versus reactive mode, if you do scenario planning, you anticipate various scenarios in which your business might operate against societal challenges, it will help you then anticipate the moves and the shifts you need to do to promote long-term value and growth. So make sure that you're focused on the short term by understanding your strategy, your competitive environment, your targets, your governance, um, your performance drivers, but also keep an eye on that long-term through future scenario planning and understanding so that you can anticipate the change along the way instead of always reacting to it. 
Cool. I know you have shared with us a lot of insights and advice. So is there anything else you want to add on before we wrap up today's sessions? We are in an extraordinary moment of change. Um, and sustainability has never been more important. 10 years ago, when I was chief sustainability officer, it was a bit of a novel idea. It was for some companies and it was focused around charity giving and philanthropy. Today, it's embedded in the business and it's a way of doing business and leading companies are driving new ways of creating value. So uh, my, advice was, my advice would be be inspired, be passionate about it and engage actively. Understand your business needs, understand your customer needs and engage with your stakeholders so that you're driving systemic change for a better world and hopefully a just and sustainable world. We will keep that in mind for sure. That brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you, Christine, for the great sharing. Thank you very much, Chen. And I look forward to engaging and listening with all of you around the world. This is Azana Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care. Boing.